This is New Day Northwest. Now from the Premier of Blue Cross Studio, here's Margaret Larson. Good morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. First up this morning, a delicious recipe perfect for the cooler fall weather that's headed our way. Canel et Vanille is a new cookbook out tomorrow filled with tasty recipes for every meal and they all happen to be gluten free. Author Erin Goyoaga joins me now. Welcome back. It's been Thank you. several years since Seven you've been years. here. Yeah. Seven. Oh yeah. my gosh. Well, I'm glad okay. you're back. Yeah, thank so you. The cookbook, tell me a little bit about it. It's every meal of the day and it's all gluten free. It's all gluten free. I've been gluten free for 10 years. Um, and it goes through the day, starting from breakfast, baking time, lunch, every day, uh, kind of simple meals. And then more extensive kind of weekend gathering meals, how I set the table, and then desserts. Oh. You end with the best thing. <laughs> yeah. So we have some desserts here today, but yes. we're actually making the soup. We're making a roasted carrot and cashew soup, oh which gosh, is gluten free so and also vegan. So for those uh, who don't do dairy, um, it's a base of cashew milk or coconut yeah. milk. And there are lots of people who might want to try going gluten free, but you're you're not familiar maybe with how to cook that way. And the cookbook's perfect for that. You can kind of get started and see how yeah. you feel. Exactly. Um, I feel like gluten-free is pretty common these days, but many people resort on like commercial products and they go buy them. But actually, you can, it's so easy to make at you home. You can do so, it yourself. Yeah. Let's exactly. do this thing. Okay, so we're going to, uh, this soup is so simple, perfect for fall. And mm -hmm. actually, you can, it's with carrots this time, but you can make this with roasted cauliflower, roasted sweet potatoes, r roasted squash, and essentially any kind of vegetable that lends itself to being roasted and can handle heat. Um, it's so simple. Throw everything on a sheet pan in the oven at 400 degrees mm -hmm. for 30 minutes, and then you just come back and mix it with some stock and coconut milk and blend it, and then it's I can ready. do that. Yeah, it's so simple. <laughs> so all we're right. going to um, get the, all the veggies that are going to go on the tray ready. And these are, you mentioned that, they're, they're really big carrots. carrots. I say to cut them at two inches, but they're so big, we're going to cut them a little bit smaller so they cook faster. So you don't want to take an hour to do this if you don't have to, and you leave the peel on. I live, well, because these are, I got them yesterday at the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. They are so, the skin is so thin, and I know they're really fresh, then I don't peel them. I just right. wash them and scrub them. And they're nutrients in the skin as well, Exactly, right? and then once you roast it, um, you just really can't tell the difference. If they were maybe, if you get um, carrots that are bulk, and sometimes the skin is a little bit thicker because mm -hmm. they're a little bit older, which is, they're still fine. In just that case, I would, take them off yeah, I case. would peel them. All right. So we're gonna just get these on the tray, and we're gonna roast them with garlic and shallot, and if you don't have shallot, you can do, just use onions or leeks, and then uh, we're going to use some spices that maybe uh, some people are not familiar with, but they are some of my favorite warming spices. Uh, coriander, which is not that um, unusual, and then sumac. Oh, I love sumac. Sumac, okay. Somebody so you else has taught me this, and I know that we don't cook with that a lot, but very easy to find. Just get a big bag of it. You'll exactly. like it. Exactly. And it's a little sour. And everything else. Yeah, it's sour. Um, it's used a lot in Middle Eastern cooking, but actually, I think you can actually find uh, bushes, like sumac bushes in eastern Washington. Uh, I've never actually gone forward to myself, but um, it's there. And it's oftentimes used on uh, labne or uh, hummus, like mm -hmm. to garnish it. It's a good and thing it's to charred. try out. So do you peel your garlic and your shallots? Or do you yes. Just put them on the... No, I will peel them, but I don't really cut them. So maybe if we're trying to save some time. Okay, we'll save a little time. Okay, so I think this is good um, for now for us. Do you put any oil or anything on it? Olive them? oil, okay. or you can use coconut oil if you want. Since we're using coconut milk, it would kind of make sense to use it. But um, any vegetable oil would work. I'm from Spain, so I use olive oil on everything. On everything. Yes. Um, and for the garlic, oops. oops. That one escaped. That one escaped. I just kind of five second rule. <laughs> there you go. Well, it has the skin on, so it's okay. <laughs> it's I, um, absolutely fine. I just crack it, and then then it just kind of the skin just comes, comes right off. off. Really easy. And the same with the shallots. Um, 
I want to see you do that because I struggle with the shallots. I so do if too. You have an expert <laughs> way to do that. I'm. I'm. All I struggle ears. with shallots, and I think it's because sometimes when they're really fresh, the skin is so thin that it just it's not as easy to peel. It just so. sticks and kind of like flubber. You can't get it off of so there. I'll probably look a little no, silly no, on camera. No. Perhaps you'll to. be able to teach us something about how this all works. Yes. Um, let's see, and then. Um, you're going to help me blend. So when these go in the oven, we're going to blend some cashews that we've toasted already okay. with some of the coconut milk. And that's going to be the base for the soup um, instead of cream. You know, instead of having heavy cream, you get this really um, rich kind of textural because the cashews don't get... A little get, bit of nut yeah, in there a little because bit of they nut. don't completely liquefy. Exactly, and you taste it uh, through the soup and it's really nice. You could do it with almonds. Um, hazelnuts would be really mm -hmm. good too. Oh, you're making um, me hungry. I wasn't hungry before, <laughs> but now I love that nice nutty <laughs> taste in a soup is so good. And I love um, using this also as a base for... So for example, if, if you make this with less liquid, you could almost turn it into like a hummus, like a dip, because it would be very creamy um, and That's thicker. That's a good idea, sure. Yeah, so if you're looking to do like a vegan dip for your friends or something, this could be uh, really good. And you could even throw a can of chickpeas in there. So there's so many, Thicken you know. Thicken it up a little bit with the chickpeas? Exactly. I get what you're saying. So okay. there's always so many options you can do um, with roasted vegetables. So if you have roasted vegetables for dinner one night, then you can turn them into a soup the next day, okay. even with potatoes or... Well, we have just a couple of minutes, so shall oh, we put the, yes. the roasted veggies in? So I actually have a swap the magic out here. Of television, <laughs> voila. Here, so, oh, do you want to do that? Or sure, maybe you just pop all these in? Yes. Okay. And let's, first let's blend, let's blend the... Help me out with that, here. thank you yeah. very much. I know. We'll do the cashews. The cashews. With the coconut milk first. Yum. We'll give it a quick buzz. Just a little pulse? Yeah. Tell me how long. All right, that's good. Okay. And then Enough. we'll throw all of these in there. Okay. With, and I know this is a little, probably not looks very, it doesn't look very elegant on camera. That's but. all right, <laughs> it's okay. I'll catch any that come out this way. And so again, we could use squash. We could, use, you know, if there's something else that you like, this would be great works even with because there's a, enough flavor and the other things to kind of. Because I've gotten very into the rice cauliflower Ooh. lately. I yeah. really love it, and there's so much you can do where okay. it does taste a lot like rice. Is Let's that just give, yeah. Give that I, we a don't want show. to. We're going to add a little bit of stock. Okay. So it doesn't. Here, I'm going to put this out of the way. Very good. I won't start up till you tell me. It makes sense to do it in two batches so it doesn't go all over the place. <laughs> Which happens, I especially, it. <laughs> especially if the ingredients are hot. Sometimes yeah. it just wants to go everywhere. Make sure I've got the lid on here nice and... Okay, how much? Until it's blended. Oh, well, that's not hard. Now, what yeah. happens if you're getting it where it's not really stirring it around It probably enough? needs a little bit more liquid. Okay. And it's probably not fast enough. I feel like I'm flooding the I car suddenly with that, but it's as easy as that. <laughs> and then it. warm it back up. Yeah, and you can make it, usually actually, if you have time and make it the day ahead. It's, Brilliant. I think all soups taste better when you make them a day ahead and they have a chance to really to sit. sit. I see yeah. a little plop of yogurt on top. Anything. Um, yogurt, so I usually uh, just get more, more cashews, toasted cashews and put them on top delicious. with a little bit of olive oil. Well, if you have these kinds of things in that book and we're okay with them to be vegan and gluten-free, then you've done very well. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Check out Erin's Carrot and Cashew Soup Recipe right now on New Day's website. We'll also tell you more about her cookbook and happy cooking. Thank you so much. Thank you. When we come back, best-selling author Malcolm Gladwell stops by to talk about his new book on how miscommunications cause personal, even global, consequences. We'll be right back.